Brakes for your mountain bike are super important, but often taken for granted. But if you didn't have these, well, you'd look like this. It's all bust. <laughs> <laughs> mountain bike brakes come in two typical varieties, two piston and four piston. And in this video, I'm gonna explain the differences between these two and then help you decide which is best for you. First, let's take a very basic look at a mountain bike brake. So we've got a lever or lever, depending on where you're from, which is connected to a hose connected to a caliper. Now, when you squeeze the brake lever, there's a small piston or plunger inside the lever body right here, which will force fluid through the hose and then into the brake caliper. When you squeeze the brake lever, fluid is pushed into the caliper, the pistons push outward, squeezing the brake rotor and will slow down your bike. However, not all brakes have the same amount of stopping power and most of the difference in stopping power is determined if the brake caliper has two pistons or four pistons. So now let's take a closer look at a brake caliper. A two piston caliper has one piston on each side of the caliper and a four piston caliper has two pistons on each side the caliper. Simply put, the more surface area you have on the pistons, the more potential you have for more braking power. Four pistons have more surface area than two pistons, resulting in more braking power. Since two pistons are wider than one, the brake pads are also typically wider on four piston brakes compared to two pistons, and a larger brake pad can dissipate heat better since there's more material to act as a heat sink. Also, using a larger brake rotor will create more braking power since there's more leverage and they'll stay cooler because, again, there's more material to dissipate heat. Two quick downsides to running a larger rotor are that they're bigger and they're more prone to getting hit when riding, and also they do decrease modulation and cause your brakes to be a little bit more touchy. So yes, four piston brakes naturally have more stopping power than two piston brakes and are overall just better while descending. But there's more to it than that. Now let's go over some common brake lingo. Brake fade is a term commonly used to describe a brake's loss of power or fade while under heavy use. Four piston caliper bodies are naturally naturally bigger to include those extra two pistons, which mean they also carry more fluid inside. More physical material on the caliper body itself and more fluid inside means that these things shed heat much better than a smaller two piston caliper, don't get as hot on descents, and have less loss of power or less brake fade. Modulation is another term used to describe how well you can control the brake's power output. Traditionally, Shimano two piston brakes have little to no modulation and a very on-off feeling, while Shimano four piston brakes not only have increased power, but much better modulation. Squeeze the lever a little bit and have a little bit of braking power. Squeeze the lever a lot and have a lot of braking power. This makes controlling your speed a lot smoother and easier, especially down steep and loose terrain. Also, the levers themselves on two piston caliper brakes are a little bit different than four piston caliper brakes, but for the most part, the differences in stopping power are just made up by the four piston caliper. Now, a tremendous amount of bikes come stock with two piston brakes. They're cheaper to produce and overall just keep the price of complete bikes down. This is starting to change within the past year or two as more manufacturers are realizing that more and more of their customers are wanting to ride very aggressively. But still, most complete bikes that are under $3,000 on the trails today have two piston brakes. But do you actually need to upgrade to four piston brakes? Well, let's figure that out. If you're rocking two piston brakes and you feel like your brakes are losing power while descending or just straight up don't have much power from the get-go, then you will greatly benefit from an upgrade to four piston brakes. Plain and simple. You'll also be able to ride faster with better brakes. But wait, how can having better brakes make you ride faster? Isn't their only purpose to slow you down? Well, yes, but if you have confidence that your brakes will actually slow you down, then you'll feel more confident to let a rip and ride fast. For example, I rode these Shimano XT M8000 two-piston brakes for a season out here in the Pacific Northwest, and while I was riding steep trails, I was straight up just like holding the lever the whole time to keep me at a slow pace, so I didn't speed up too quick because I really, really felt like at the bottom of steep sections of trail that if I grabbed my brake to slow myself down after carrying speed downhill, that I wasn't going to stop. These things had a tremendous amount of brake fade. They just didn't have enough power for the style of riding that I'm doing. But after putting those away and going back to my 
preferred brakes, the SRAM Code RSC. I felt like I could actually carry my speed down steep sections of trail because I knew that at the bottom of those steeps, I could grab brake and slow myself down. So just a lot more enjoyable and I felt like overall I could just ride my bike better. Switching from Shimano to SRAM brakes was not the direct fix. It was going from a two piston brake to a more powerful four piston brake. Riding in any area with any vertical descending will be benefited from more powerful brakes. There's never really a bad time to have more powerful brakes. So even if you're only going up and down a couple hundred feet on your ride, then you're still going to be very happy on your descent with more stopping power. Also, if you're just a larger rider, then having a more powerful brake will definitely help keep your speed in check. A four piston brake is naturally a little heavier than a two piston brake because it's got more pistons. So if you live in a flat area and mostly do cross country riding and you don't really need a more powerful brake, then a two piston brake is probably fine for you. Seriously, we were sitting around and scratching our head for a little while to even just find anything that could possibly be made negative of having more stopping power of a four piston brake. And really the only thing that we could kind of conjure up between us was that four piston brakes require a little bit more maintenance than two piston brakes. Two extra pistons means that there's two extra seals inside of the caliper. So technically you have to keep two extra seals clean, but for the most part, you don't really have to do that. Um, so that's not really a downside. We were really reaching for a negative. And also a four piston brake will be slightly more expensive than a two piston brake, but it's not worth saving like $16 to get a less powerful brake when you need the extra power of a four piston and brake, so again, that's not really a downside. Also, one thing worth mentioning is that most two piston brakes and also sometimes four piston brakes on stock bikes will come with organic brake pads pre-installed in them. So if you just want a smidge more power out of your stock brakes, check to see if you have organic brake pads installed in them. And if you do, definitely swap those out for metallic brake pads. You'll have more power while descending. And if you're not sure what kind of brake pads you have, you can feel free to email us at info at the Lost Co and send us a picture of your brake pad setup and we'll help you out there. But if you definitely want a noticeable power increase, then let's get you some brakes. Like most bikes and parts, there's way too many options on the market. So these are the brakes that we personally ride and recommend to all of our customers. Like I said, there's a ton of brake options on the market from brands like Hope, TRP, Magura, etc., etc., all of which work very well, but these are just some common examples of our go-to brakes here in the shop. We'll start on the low price points and work our way all the way up to the best of the best. So if you're just looking to get some four piston brakes on your bike for a low price, then we would highly recommend the Shimano MT501 slash MT520s. These are $144.99 and are a super simple brake. These use the old Shimano iSpec 2 style levers and just don't have a super pretty finish like SLX or XTs. These will be the heaviest option, require a tool to adjust lever reach, and do not come with ice tech brake pads. But they will offer reliable performance and a good amount of stopping power at a price that will make most people happy. All right, now let's move over to what we consider to be the best bang for your buck brake on the market right now, and that would be the Shimano SLX M7120s. These are $174.99. The overall finish is much nicer, and they just look and feel like a nicer product compared to the Dior MT520s. These use the new Shimano EV style levers, which, this sounds stupid, but it's true, are stiffer and offer a way better feel than the iSpec 2 style levers since they flex less. SLX levers use tool-free reach adjust, so you can adjust your levers easily and use ice tech brake pads, which have heat sink fins to keep the brakes temperature down for more consistency. SLX brakes will be more powerful and consistent on long descents versus the Dior due to their new internal redesign to give them the same power as their downhill rated Saint brakes. We've been testing these for a while. Not only do they have awesome modulation, but they've got quite a bit of stopping power, which makes them pretty sweet for the price. Now, the next step up from those would be the Shimano XT M8120s, which are $209.99. These are basically the same brakes as the SLX, but with a slightly different finish color and a free stroke adjustment, which to be honest, doesn't really do anything. XTs also come in a black box instead of the lame blue box that the SLX has come in, and they say, XT on it. And to be honest, you'll probably just want XT brakes if you just want XT brakes. But now onto our shop favorite brake, which we consider to be the best brake on the market, the SRAM Code RSC. The Code RSCs sell for $245 each and offer the most power and the most adjustability. The lever not only has tool-free reach, but also pad contact adjustment, which lets you control where the bite point sits. So when you're squeezing the brake lever and you think that the distance in the lever throw is just too far for your personal preference, then you can dial up
up that pad contact adjustment and then reduce the amount of distance in the lever's throw, making it just more touchy and you can really dial it in to feel exactly how you want it. Plus, they've got amazing modulation and you can seriously control your speed incredibly well with these things. So if you are riding aggressively and you want the ability to adjust everything to get everything feeling exactly how you'd like it, then you are going to be best suited with the SRAM codes. All right, well, there you have it. That was the ins and outs of two piston versus four piston mountain bike brakes. Now, what brakes are you riding on your bike? We'd love to know, so let us know in the comments below this video. And as always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you really like this video, subscribe to our channel, click that little bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you're interested in upgrading your brakes and still have some questions on the mind, give us a call at the shop, 360-306-8827 or shoot us an email to info at thelostco.com. But if you've got your mind made up and you know exactly which brakes you'd like, click this link right here, go over to the brakes page on our website and order up a pair of stoppers, get free shipping in the USA. Well, until next time, happy trails. I'm gonna go start writing a script for when six piston brakes become popular again. Peace out.